Hello! Let's talk about a certain type of high-speed transfer you can do with a Sparrow called a Smart Transfer. This capability is one that we have as part of a Sparrow console, which is the monitoring and automation piece of our portfolio. I'm going to bore you to death with some slides and then actually spend some time showing you the tool. If you haven't heard of IBM Aspera, um, or you don't know how awesome this capability is, uh, go to my channel and check out my other videos and then come back to this. Joking, you're not going to do that. So here it is in 10 seconds. Uh, basically, TCP has issues, and we at Aspera overcome all the things that limit TCP-based transfers like latency and packet loss. Um, since we do that, we provide the fastest, efficient, scalable, reliable, and manageable transfers available in the industry. Additionally, patented technologies mean that we won't overcrowd other network traffic or degrade quality of service for other users. Uh, all this courtesy of our FASP protocol, which is the underlying technology in all Aspera transfer types, including the smart transfers that I'm going to focus on today as part of this video. So a smart transfer is just one of the many categories of transfers or transfer scenarios, if you want to call them that, that you can accomplish with Aspera. It is a saved transfer template that can be shared and executed on command or on schedule. So since it's a template, you can execute it as is, or you can allow it to be edited at runtime. You can set it to send data to multiple destinations via push or pull scenarios. And since we have the best protocol, we also have the best set of knobs and buttons uh, to be adjusted so that, you're, uh, so that the transfer behaves and delivers the data uh, exactly how you want it to, and I'll even show you these in detail in the demo. Why and when would I use this? Uh, really, any transfer you want to repeat can be done here. Uh, now that most of us work remotely, teams can use them to submit data and work products reliably and quickly. If your work relies on external data and you must go out and grab it, you can do that sort of thing really quickly and simply with smart transfers. Offsite backups are a big use case have a data set, copy that data set on a schedule, have an audit trail and use encryption at rest and in transit, etc. Uh, they're really they're really very flexible and, and pretty useful for everyday users, uh, but they have their limitations. Uh, smart transfers really aren't the best tool for system integrations. They are really designed around a GUI and there are other transfer types via our API that probably fit the bill much better for integrating data movement into our systems. Speaking of other transfer options, um, Aspera really covers the gambit of use cases when it comes to data movement. Syncing, streaming, gateways, proxies, collaborative environments, highly automated workflows, and tight system integrations, we really do it all uh, when it comes to data movement. Anyways, uh, slides show you nothing, so let's actually take a look at the tool. This smart transfer capability is a feature of Aspera console. This video is not about a spare console, but you're going to see a lot of it in here. A console is an amazingly powerful tool for data movement automation and monitoring, as well as managing your Aspera file transfer infrastructure from a single pane of glass. If I look at the map, I can see that I have five nodes monitored by this console. Yeah, we're going to send data to that one in Tokyo, kind of just for fun. Um, I can tell from the rest of the dashboard that really nothing is going on right now with these nodes. Transfers are not being made, nothing is scheduled. This is a brand new environment I set up to show you guys this. Here is a searchable list of my nodes where I can manage them and where I can add more nodes. I can actually push configurations to nodes from console, allowing me to manage all my endpoints from a single location. If I go to the transfer tab, I can see all of my transfer templates. I have one created kind of just for show. Uh, I will make one from scratch so that you guys can see the whole process. But note that this list has a full text search filter and that you can add tags to save smart transfers. Um, so really, no matter how many you create, you'll always be able to find them easily. So if your infrastructure grows, uh, you have a lot of users and things seem a little hectic, uh, you can pretty much always find what you're looking for. So here's where I create my smart transfer. This is obviously a lot more powerful than a copy-paste solution. You're able to control a lot of aspects about how the transfer behaves. Uh, first, I'm going to select my source. I give it the connection credentials. Uh, I can have these saved so that other users can make transfers without having to actually know the credentials. Um, I can use SSH keys as well for more security. 
this is my demo environment, so it's it's just good old root for me, but don't don't do that in real life. So I can now choose a source directory. So this looks at the doc root that the source has set. Um, this is kind of like the jail that you create for security purposes so that uh, the Aspera server doesn't have access to the entire file system on whatever server it's running on. Um, I had the CentOS 7 installer in here. That's nearly five gigabytes, so really it's big enough for us to get some metrics on. Uh, I'm going to let it do the entire directory because I want to show you uh, more filters below. Here is where we get into some things that uh, you can set up to give the executor um, of the smart transfer some runtime configurations. Uh, you can up, uh, you can open stuff like this up, or you can actually lock it down so that the executors really don't have any options other than to make the transfer you know, as it's defined. Uh, we're going to leave it um, you know, the whole directory. We will define our destinations in a second, but first I want to show you some of the key options you can set for this transfer. Um, these are a really good uh, representative bit of the kinds of options, you know, knobs, bells, whistles, uh, that you'll see on other Aspera transfer types, uh, which is actually why smart transfers are a great subject of study for this video. Obviously, I should be able to set target minimum rates uh, for a transfer. Um, but something special with Aspera is this bandwidth policy. This is where our patented transfer control comes into effect. So under the FAIR policy, Aspera will play nicely with other network traffic. It's going to go as fast as it can without overcrowding networks uh, or slowing down traffic and reducing the quality of service to other users and applications. I can tune the aggressiveness of this for special networks like SATCOM and radio. Really cool is that we actually don't require any monitoring on the intermediary, intermediary networks to do this. All we need is the Aspera software at each end uh, and we're good to go. There's also a policy where I can set it to blast data at a certain rate regardless of conditions. This has its uses, but it, not, not today. Let's just leave it at fair. I can control encryption here. I can enforce both encryption at rest and in transit. I could have put the server in FIPS mode uh, under which only FIPS approved encryption algorithms can be used. Uh, that's a server setting, not a transfer setting, so you don't see it here. Um, of course, I can also upload my own certificates to be used in the encryption, but again, that is done at the server level, uh, not at the transfer setting level. All right, file handling. Uh, here is where things actually kind of get interesting. File handling is where we can control and filter what files get sent and the logic of how they are delivered. Uh, filtering by timestamp and simple regex is pretty standard, and you you, know, you see that in the timestamp filtering exclude and include filters. Uh, in file attributes, I can have a spare preserve the existing metadata of the file so that files at the destination have their history intact. Um, destination deletion and resume policy, this is where you can really tune your transfer so that your destination has the exact data you want at it and the data is sent in the most efficient way possible. Um, destination deletion first. Do you want uh, to make sure that nothing exists at the destination other than the data that is transferred from your source? Uh, check this. It will cause you to need to transfer everything over again, even if some of the data you were going to transfer was already there, uh, but you can be certain nothing old is lingering around. Uh, that's that's really good to kind of clean the house. No, nothing from any other transfers could possibly be in that folder uh, after this transfer is done. Conversely, let's look at resume policy. If a completed file already exists at the destination, what do we do? Uh, this means that Aspera can actually determine if a file is already at the destination and thus not have to transfer it. Uh, this speeds up transfer time and reduces overall bandwidth utilization. It might seem like a no-brainer to leave it at default, but Let's look at some of the other options. This has consequences. Uh, this kind of gets your, your brain going in a few directions. First, there are a ton of use cases for each of these options, not just from a destination point of view, but from a standpoint of how is the source getting data in there in the first place and what kind of metadata is on it. Second, how might this interact with whether or not I am deleting the entire destination contents before I send? Uh, third, uh, how are these differences being determined? That leads us right into when checking for files differences. Um, this setting, again, the nature of your data will likely determine what you need here and uh, what is most efficient. But it's important to note that 
Aspera has thought through all of this and actually, you know, has these really powerful options and is way more sim uh, sorry, is way more than a like simple copy paste transfer solution. You know, we put a lot of logic into this and it's a very powerful tool. Notifications, pretty straightforward. I can set things up so that certain people are notified when events happen with a transfer. Good to know. In the advanced area, probably the most common thing people change here is the initiator attribute. This allows you to set the transfer up as a pull, uh, where the destination actually initiates the transfer and asks the source to send it. This is handy if you have some servers with strict inbound traffic rules, maybe some super secure offsite backup kind of stuff, um, and you really want them to pull that data rather than uh, rather than have it pushed to them. Uh, the general uh, the general setup with the spare transfers is is a push. Looking at scheduling. Uh, of course, we can schedule these to happen automatically rather than having somebody initiate them manually. Um, highly recommend this in most cases. Pretty standard fields there. Now, destinations. Where do we want our data to go? Uh, I'm going to create two destinations for good measure and it will send the data to both as part of the smart transfer. Our source is in DC. Our first destination is in Tokyo. Uh, note that uh, both the Washington DC source and Tokyo destination have gigabit network cards, and they're also running full-blown Aspera high-speed transfer servers. The Dallas destination that I'm making is actually only a high-speed endpoint. Um, that will not affect the transfer speed, uh, but what will affect that transfer speed is that the machine only has a 100 megabit network interface. All right, check this out. I can actually override the main settings I made and change them for each destination if I want. So different destinations can actually have different transfer settings. Um, I'm not going to do this, but it's pretty cool to know that there are a lot of use cases for this. Um, and it's really cool to know that I can do it. Uh, imagine giving one destination priority over another, maybe giving it more bandwidth, um, maybe uh, setting the filters and never sending certain files to a certain destination or maybe you have a destination with multiple users having access uh, to the dock route um, and even making sure that files sent to that uh, certain location will be encrypted uh, at rest a little differently than uh, files sent to other destinations. Uh, that means they would require a password to open and the other destinations would just have the files uh, with no encryption at rest. It's, it's really very flexible. Okay, we have it all entered. Um, we didn't really change much, but let's give it a name and save it. So I'll name it Demo Transfer 1. Um, I can set this transfer to be available to other users. I won't. That's because there are no others in my environment. Uh, I can also allow users to change the attributes at execution time. This gives me flexibility when I'm giving it to teams. Maybe I make a template, all my teams can use it, and at runtime they make settings that point to their data and to their specific destinations. Again, very flexible. I'm not going to do that right now. There are no other people or teams in my environment. Uh, finally, we can add some tags. Pretty standard here. Gave it a tag. And save it. Alright, so I had to take a little break, um, but let's, uh, let's get this thing started. From the list of transfers, I just click Start. Uh, I go here, I check my source and destinations, and again, just click start again. Uh, on the dashboard, you can see I have a, a couple problem transfers. That's because I, I tried this transfer a few times uh, before and it, it failed, uh, but it's working this time, obviously, because I fixed it. On the, on the map on the right, you see some kind of cool lines light up uh, between my source and my destinations, uh, just as a, as a visual. And on the, the bandwidth charts in the bottom, you start to see uh, individual node and aggregate bandwidth start to show up on there. We go into the transfer itself and see like the, the first level of details. You can see that it's already at 22%. Uh, um, that's because some of the file was already there from my previous transfers that I either uh, failed to go all the way or I stopped halfway um, because I, I just didn't want to wait for them to go the whole way. Um, so diving into an individual session detail uh, that would be the actual connection between the source and one destination. What I'm doing right now is I'm upping the the target um, transfer rate. It was at 10, now it's at 1,000 megabits per second, and we can watch Aspera successfully transfer data from Washington, D.C. 
uh, to Tokyo um, at a full, you know, 1, 1, 1. 1.2 gigabits per second. Uh, that's pretty cool. I, I really challenge uh, most other protocols to, to be able to do that around the globe, high-speed data movement, um, in the way that Aspera is able to do it. Uh, looking back at these transfer details, uh, I can see that the one at the top, the one I sped up from DC to Tokyo, it, it's already done. So I already moved uh, that you know 4.3 gigabyte uh, CentOS installer to Tokyo. Now I'm looking at the the session details from DC to Dallas. Again, it's part of the same transfer, but there's two different sessions because I'm going to multiple destinations. I can look in the logs, um, or I should say these are more um, records of what's going on. It's not really the log, uh, but it's a bunch of the information on it. And it, it's all right here. Um, this is a whole lot of data Do you need if you need to troubleshoot this or, or anything like that, um, or if you need to see exactly what files went where. Um, looking on here, I see my, my DC to Tokyo is complete. My DC to Dallas is, is still going. All right, we're going to enter a time warp real quick, and then we'll be right back when this finishes. All right, the transfer is complete, and um, we go back into the details into it here, and we'll go into an, an individual session, and I can see uh, all of the files that were transferred. Again, we did that whole directory, so the CentOS installer along with uh, two other files. Um, let's look at what kind of reports I can run on this, you know, beyond just that dashboard and the metadata on the individual transfer. I'm going to pull up uh, a reporting engine, and it's going to be able to do reports on, you know, if I want all the transfers that happen between all my nodes and, and things like that. This gives me great audibility, you know, if I'm in that kind of environment where I need that. So we'll run this report. There's a couple options I can do on it. I can also create custom reports if I want, and I'll, I'll show you a bit of that in a second. It takes a second to run, but then I can open it right up, and I can see all my previous errors. I can also see all the files that were, were completed moving. This report was files by date, so it's going to show me individual files rather than grouping them by node or by transfer section. I can see the SQL on this, so this just this is just out of the box. We give you this capability, and we have very well commented uh, source code for these reports so that you can go and use them as a, a great uh, example if you want to go and make your own. All right, that's really it. Thank you guys so much for your time. I know this video was a little long, but there's a lot of good information that I wanted to cram in there. And uh, always feel free to reach out to me directly or uh, in the comments if you have questions or want any more information.